Logic Pro 10.3, actually our computers are on 10.4 now, but this is Logic Pro 10.3 Lesson 4. We're going to be working with virtual drum tracks. What I want us to do in the remaining lessons that we have for Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro is to just spend time using the software, follow along with what I do, copy what I do. If there's a keyboard shortcut that grabs your attention, try it three, four, five times. Try it again three, four, five times. So I'm not just looking for you to watch the video, make a page of notes, take a quiz, and move on. The only way we're going to get our skills up to that level of certification is by actually using the program and spending some time in it. I'm going to give you all these ideas on drummer tracks, so spend a little time manipulating some of these controls, so on and so forth. Let's get into it. We're going to open Logic. We're going to start with a drummer track. I'm going to make sure Open Library is selected, and if you know anything about me, you know the only answer in the genre category is rock and or roll. Let's go. I'm going to listen to my man Kyle playing drums. I want to hear the snare. I want to hear the kick drum, cymbals, hi-hat. I want to hear how everything goes together. I'm going to hit the space bar, see what Kyle's got to play for me. Starts with that big crash cymbal. Got a little bit of kick drum and snare drum. I want to zoom in close and take a look at what the drummer track looks like in sort of like an emulation of waveforms. This right here is a crash cymbal. This is a hi-hat that's a little softer. This is a hi-hat that's a little louder. This is a kick drum. This is a snare drum. Like I said, it's an emulation of the waveform that we're very familiar with seeing. This is the way that Logic Pro shows us what the drummer is playing in a more informative way. So if you didn't know that, take a second, look at a drum track, figure out what is what. There's a kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat. Is there another crash cymbal coming up? Not so much. I'm looking for a fill. There's a little crash cymbal right at the end. Let's take a look at some of our other settings. If we hover the mouse over a drummer, we get a little bit of information about that drummer's characteristics. As I select different drummers, you'll see the region update, you'll see some of the presets update, and you'll see the drum kit update down here in the library as well. If there's a drum kit that I really like, I'm going to hit this play button inside the drummer edit window. If there's a drum kit that I really like, I can choose the actions menu, change the properties to keep the drum kit when changing drummers. So now I can change drummers on the fly and I get a little bit different pattern, a little bit different feel, but I have the same drum kit. So that could be really handy if there's a drum kit that you absolutely have to use, but you want to try some different sounds, some different patterns, a different feel. I'm going to go back to Kyle and I'm going to pop the tempo up on this track by double clicking in the tempo control of the LCD window. I'm going to go with 147 some fast rock and roll. Now we're going to look at some of the other settings in the drummer edit window. If you're a producer or an engineer working with the drummer, you're going to be prepared to tell them to play a little bit louder, play a little bit softer, make the beat a little bit more complex, make the beat a little bit more simple. Of course, that's what's going on down here. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty simple. You should know that anytime you let go of that puck, you're going to have this region that the drummer is playing refresh itself. If you keep that puck in your hand, it's not going to refresh. It's just going to wait for you to drop it down. Complex and loud. Simple and soft. Pick right in the middle. There's a slider on the hi-hat if you want a little bit more action out of the hi-hat. Sixteenth notes. Kick and snare also has a setting that will let you get a little bit more activity out of the kick and snare. Also, if this was a multi-track project, we could click on follow and then that would give us a drop-down menu where we could pick another one of our instruments for the kick and snare drum to follow along with. As you get to the end of regions, we have what are called fills, drum fills. If we want a lot of action on the fill, we can drag the fill slider all the way to the top. If we want a little bit less action on the fills, we can bring the fill setting down. 
One characteristic to note that, like I said before, this region will update anytime you make any manipulations down here. A quick way to refresh that region is to just make a quick change on the fill and then that's going to modify the whole region. I can control option zoom to see the region again and I can make just a simple change on the fill that's going to change the pattern just a little bit. Another way to do that is to right click or control click, go down to edit and choose refresh region. If I want to add some additional percussion such as tambourine, shaker, or hand claps, I can do that here. If I want to focus on the toms instead of hi-hat, I can do that. If I want to focus on the ride cymbals, crash cymbals, instead of the hi-hat, I could do that as well. Finally, on this screen is the swing setting. What the swing is, instead of having a straight eighth note, one and two and three, the swing will make it bounce a little bit more. One, a two, a three, a four. Or you can make that change on the 16th note. One E and a two E and a ba ba da ba da ba da ba. That's swing. Click on details and we get three more settings that we can manipulate. We can either turn the feel up so that the drummer is pushing the tempo a little bit faster, or we can pull the feel down and it'll feel as though the drummer is laying back a little bit and playing a little bit behind the beat. You can set the hi hat to open or close, or you can set it on automatic. Finally, we have what are called ghost notes. Those are the softer notes that the drummer might play on the snare drum in between some of the harder backbeats on two and four, for example. Next, we're gonna build up our arrangement. This could be handy for you if you're making music with or without a drum track. Just so happens that this information is presented alongside this drum track information. I think it's pretty handy if you're making any kind of song and you want an introduction, a verse, a chorus, a bridge, those kind of things, you know, like music. That's called the form. Well, let's start by showing the global tracks header. You can either click this little down button here or you can hit the letter G. Then I can right click or I can control click on it and I'm gonna take off marker, I'm gonna take off signature, and I'm gonna take off tempo because those all are things that I'm gonna leave alone right now. What I'm gonna be working with at this point is called the arrangement track header. I'm gonna hit the plus button and you'll see what happens here is there's an eight bar section that's added into the markers and I have a drop down menu that lets me choose what is this section in the piece of music that I'm working on. Well, intro sounds like a good idea and maybe verse is next, maybe chorus, maybe bridge, maybe outro, there we go. I can get into these drop down menus and I can pick a different name for each section as I work on it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this drum track that I messed with a little bit earlier. Right click on that, delete that. I'm gonna resize this intro to be, let's say four measures long because eight measures is a little bit long. And then I'm gonna have two verses and then I'm gonna click away from the name here but I'm gonna hold down option and that's gonna let me copy a new verse in before the bridge. And if I hit command left arrow, that zooms out. Change that to chorus. And then again, I can option drag the verse and that puts the verse in before the outro. Next, I'm gonna right click or control click and I'm gonna populate with drummer regions. So just like that, the drum track is fairly well lined out for this piece of music and I'm ready to go. A Couple more tweaks before we get on to customizing our drum kit. A Couple more tips, some things that are pretty cool. I'm gonna use control option, I'm gonna zoom in on the intro section, and I'm gonna play this back. But I want it to loop. There's a lot of different ways you can do that, but here's a neat one. If you take the arrangement track section, I'm gonna click on intro, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna let go of it on the cycle region and automatically now the cycle region is designed to loop around that. One thing we haven't talked about is that Logic has a built-in left click and command click tool. This is called the marquee tool. And if I hold down command, I get the marquee tool. And if I double click on the intro region, I can split that into two different regions. Now I'm gonna click on the first section 
And I'm going to have the drummer play a little bit softer. Maybe more. And now I've gotten into the region, split it in half, made some manipulations then so that it's not just an eight measure loop that changes only at the eight bars. Now you can get inside it and make some changes within. Now that we're done building the overall track, we can get in and manipulate the sounds of the drums themselves. In a recording studio environment, we may reposition microphones, we may be able to tune drum heads, we may ask drummers to play with different sticks or to emphasize different drums, that sort of thing. Well, now that we're in Logic and we're producing a virtual drum track, we want that same level of control. So let's start with something called Smart Controls. And the Smart Control button is right up here at the top of the page, or you can hit B to open the Smart Controls. What Smart Controls are, are on-screen controls that are already assigned to basic areas of the channel strip. We can use these knobs here to adjust the timbre of the different drums, and that's a word I want to emphasize for musicians and non-musicians alike. Timbre. It's spelled T-I-M-B-R-E, and it means the tone color of the instrument. So right here we could adjust the tone color of the kick, snare, the toms, the percussion, the cymbals, and the hi-hat. We can turn compression on or off. We can increase the amount of compression. We can change the overall tone of the drum kit. And if you notice, when I manipulate this tone control, watch the EQ over here. Now when I manipulate the room knob, watch the auxiliary bus, which is sending signal to that auxiliary bus, which is a reverb effect that's going to adjust the sound of the room. So these are your smart controls, and we can make some basic adjustments in the smart controls. Side note, and totally unrelated to this particular section, just a bonus tip. If I have a new software instrument track, I can drag regions from the drummer track and they become MIDI regions when I let go of them on a software instrument track. That's pretty cool. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into the drum set and make a few more modifications. Over here on the character card area, and if you're not seeing this, this is the library control, Y for library, and if I was you, I might pop that shortcut just a few times. And what I wanna do is click on the drum kit that I'm using. As soon as I click on that, this updates at the top of the library, and I can get into what's called the drum kit designer. Now, of course, I can resize this just a little bit, slide it out of my way, or here's a handy shortcut that I just picked up in this particular chapter. If I wanna toggle these windows off and on, I hit the V button, it goes away. I hit the V button again, it comes back. File that away, try it on an EQ window. I think you'll like it. I'm going to click on the snare drum, and when I click the snare drum, I see some different options. If I click on the I, the little inspector button, I get a little sense of what that snare drum is, what it's made of, what size it is, etc. There's only three snare drums available with this setting, and if I want some more, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this list. I'm going to choose producer kits and then I'm going to go to SoCal Plus. As soon as I get into the drum set designer for that, I find I've got a lot more snare drums to choose from. Now I want to click on the kick drum for just a second, and I want to look at the option for dampening the kick drum. As I click on the kick drum to get a feel for the sound, I don't want a lot of resonance in the kick drum because the tempo is super fast. So as the tempo gets faster, I want less resonance and I want it a little bit more dampened. So I might listen to this and get a different feel for how I like that. You could also get into the toms and do some tuning on the high, mid, and low toms. It's times like this when I get into the real 
nuts and bolts of logic that I am often confused why we're not all just working so hard in the two hours that we're here because there's so many things we can do and dig into. So check these things out and get into the drum set designer. Last but not least, we're gonna get into electronic drums. And when electronic drums came out in the 1980s, drummers were concerned that there may be no need for drummers anymore. And there was a lot of music that was produced with electronic beats that producers made. And then it became very clear that, well, you kind of have to have a drummer's perspective in order to create these beats that are good. In fact, if I come up with a beat that I like a lot using the electronic beats and the drummers that are included in Logic, I'll sometimes think to myself, I need to find a real drummer to give it that extra personality and have them actually play it on an electronic kit if, well, if we had one, but we don't. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning and I'm going to pick an electronic drum set option. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the preferences that I changed here and I'm going to undo keep drum kit when changing drummers. I'm going to click on hip hop and then I'm going to select Maurice. Change the drummer. OK. I'm going to slide down to the verse. I'm going to click and drag that to the cycle region. That becomes my new loop area. One thing you'll notice about this beat is it doesn't seem quite as fast as the beat we were just working on with the rock pattern. If I click on details, one of the options that works really well for hip hop is auto halftime. That means if the tempo gets super fast, it'll go ahead and cut it in half. And so it'll play what's called halftime feel. Instead, I'm just gonna change this beat to 87. It's actually a little bit faster. I'm going to hit Z, which will auto zoom my selection. I'm going to go ahead and disable auto halftime just in case I manipulate that tempo again and I want it to go ahead and stay with the beat that I've defined. As long as I'm here, I'm going to turn down humanize all the way and I'm going to hear a beat that's just mechanical. If I turn up humanize all the way, then I end up getting a beat that's, well, Maybe it sounds like it's got some mistakes in it. So you want to find a sweet spot. One thing I notice about the beginning of this pattern is it starts with a big, giant cymbal crash. I don't really care for that. So what I want to do is get into some of the editing of the actual MIDI notes. And so to do that, I'm going to right click on the region. And I'm going to choose Convert to MIDI Region. I'm going to resize the piano roll editor so I can see just a little bit better. And from the view menu, I'm going to choose view drum names. So I can slide right over and I can see that symbol crash. I can click on it and I can choose delete. Now I want to open up the drum machine plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that drum machine plugin. And from here, we're going to see two different sections. We've got the drum cells along the top and we've got our good friend, the smart controls along the bottom. I'm gonna hover my mouse over the snare. I'm gonna click solo, and I'm gonna hit the space bar so I can listen in to just the snare. As I click on the snare drum, I'm presented with an option of all sorts of snares. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it back. I'm going to find a snare that I like, and then I'm going to go from there. Notice when the snare is selected, our channel strip splits in two, and now I have a snare channel strip. I'm going to click on the first available audio effects insert, and I'm going to choose Reverb, Silver Verb. From the Settings menu, I'm going to choose Room.
then I'm gonna adjust that reverb mix to my liking. Now we've edited electronic drums, we've edited regular drums, we've done all sorts of stuff, and this has been lesson for producing a virtual drum track.